Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine and welcome to my channel. I am a senior at Harvard studying molecular and cellular biology with a secondary in African American studies and a citation in Spanish. And I am in my final semester at Harvard University. I have also just finished my first week of the spring semester. Hey! So I'm very excited about that and I just wanted to look back and see what this last first week has been like. So I'm going to talk about my classes first and then all of the non-academic extracurricular type things that I've done. So the first thing is I recognized when I was getting into my first class, ooh, I need to start writing again because I haven't had to write anything for the past two-ish months. And I'm saying that because I write, handwrite all of my notes. I don't type them. So here I am back to full pages of notes for all of my classes. And I'm just happy that I had enough time in between classes to give my hands a break. So Tuesday, I was able to start my new academic schedule with Gen Ed 1115, which is servitude and slavery and abolition in the modern world. So not necessarily a fun class topic, but I did really enjoy the teacher and we probably spent the first seven minutes with him and uh, a tech lady, Jan, from the administration trying to explain to him how he gets his PowerPoint up, how he shares sound because he was trying to show us a video. After he got the tech part done, he's a fan fantastic, a fantastic lecturer. And we spent the better part of the first class talking about the difference between smuggling, human smuggling, and human trafficking. And what I have learned so far is that with human smuggling, it is a crime against the state or the nation that the person is trying to get into. But with human trafficking, it's a crime against the person because the person is a victim. So, that was really interesting to learn the difference between those two words because I've heard them pretty much used interchangeably my entire life in the news. And I really liked being able to hear that there is a difference, that the difference is substantial, and that also sets the stage for what the rest of the semester is going to be like. My next class was MCB 143, which is the Neurobiology of Vision and Blindness. And it's in the name, Neuro. So the thing is that this class is offered both within the MCB and the Neuro departments. Um, and there was a prerequisite for people to have taken Neuro 80, which I haven't because I am not a neurobiologist, but I have taken kind of like what would be similar to that for an MCB person. And I've also taken anatomy in high school, so I remember a couple of things from that. He started off with review and it was fast and furious, fast and furious. So everything in the review, I pretty much already knew or I was able to easily commit to memory. That was good. And then we also spent the first part of the lecture talking about optical illusions. So this is something that I also told the teacher beforehand is that I like learning science things, that they're fun, STEM, it's a great just area to delve into. But once you start learning more and more within the STEM world, all of the cool things within that department suddenly lose their magic. Like, interestingly enough, chemistry, it's, ba it's basically witchcraft. Physics, it's also basically witchcraft. Optical illusions are basically witchcraft. But then you start learning the science, the physics, the chemistry, whatever it is that's behind it, and then you're able to explain why what you're seeing happens, and then it loses its magic. So we started off looking with optical illusions, and they were pretty fun. I really enjoyed being able to see them because y you know what you're supposed to see but you're getting these weird overlaid images of things that aren't really there. They were some cool optical illusions. It was, it was nice. And then 
that's how we started off class talking about some of the things that we were supposed to know and then optical illusions that by the end of the year we will be able to explain why it is we're seeing what we're seeing and my final class was african american 119x that is the chocolate culture and the politics of food class Whew. I am so happy with this class. It's a big class. I also have a lot of friends in it. And she started off saying that she's very sorry that we won't be able to just start sampling right then and there because that's something she would start doing on the first day of class. She would have us come in and give us chocolate right off the bat, but she can't do that. So sad face, but she did talk about what it is that they are going to be trying to do and having us kind of supplement what would normally be happening. They also said that since we won't be able to go to the chocolate factory tour that we usually do, they're asking us where we live. That way they can see if there are any chocolate factories close to where we live that we can opt in to going on a tour to. And I think that would be pretty fun. I would really enjoy being able to go to a chocolate factory because I love dark chocolate. Well, chocolate in general. I also made a very good comment in that class. She was talking about the process by how chocolate is made, that it originally, like in the olden days before industrial Re revolution, people would use uh, la matate, which is a grinder where they would take the, the cocoa bean nibs and they would basically just rub it in between two stones to make it into a kind of paste-ish kind of thing. And then after the Industrial Revolution, they start using a mechanical liqueur grinder. Then she said that if you stop at that process to where you have that sort of grainy paste thing, that's how you get chocolates that are more textured and in the chat function I said oh like Massachusetts Taza chocolate which is the chocolate that I received from FOHO in the care package and she said yes exactly like Massachusetts Taza chocolate and I was like yes making a making a good impression already good job Jasmine so that's my first impression of the classes that I am going to be taking this year and hopefully they only go up because they started off fantastic and I am looking forward to seeing the way that these classes progress and take us through the year. So besides classes, because classes are important, but I need to do things other than that. The first thing that I did in my week of class is I went to a classical Chinese dancing tutorial that was put on by the FOHO art and wellness tutors. And it was so much fun. I learned the way that I'm supposed to hold my hands like that. I'm also probably not doing it the best, but I'm trying. And this is how you're supposed to hold your hands. She said that it was basically the opposite of ballet. And I used to do ballet when I was very young, but I thought, oh, okay, I, I know a couple of things then. We were told that we're supposed to place our fingertips forward when we're dancing, because if they're forward, that means that you're dancing for the emperor versus if they're up, that's kind of folk dancing type music. So we're all making sure that we're putting our fingertips straight forward, trying to do our best. And then we had to do a spin thing. That was hard. I just got very confused between what's supposed to be up, what's supposed to be back. But I had a fantastic time trying my best and just putting myself out there in a new dancing style because I have done ballet, tap, jazz, Zumba, uh, salsa before in my life. I've been to those five kinds of classes before, but never a Chinese traditional dancing class. And I'm looking forward to the next dancing class that FOHO is going to be offering on Tuesday, which is classical ballet. So I'll be able to go to that one and know a little bit more of what I'm doing, which is going to be fun. Then on Wednesday, we have all of these different tables with the FOHO resident tutors that are supposed to help you figure out what it is that you're trying to do. So we have a chemistry table, a physics table, a English writing table, a thesis table. We also have a tech table. Now, I am not 
CS. I don't know anything about computers. I took one class where I had to code and it nearly killed me. But the tutors that are in charge of the tech table are one of my greatest friends. And my entire blocking group just loves hanging out with those tutors. So we make it a tradition for our blocking group to go to FOHO tech table even even though most of us have nothing to do with computer science in any way we just love going there supporting them talking with them and honestly just being able to take that time for our blocking group to bond now one of the tutors that handles the tech table is also someone that is heavily involved in the foho among us group and that is something that I have been wanting to do since last semester, but I couldn't do it because I had a time conflict. So this semester, I made sure that I had that little one hour time block free. I joined the Discord and I got to play Among Us with some of my best friends. It was so much fun. So the first round, I was one of the imposters and I have played Among Us before, but very briefly this time. I was the imposter, so I get to go around and kill all the other characters. Um, we probably, and it was me and another person who also was playing as an imposter for the first time. So we did not really know what we were doing. We made a lot of mistakes, but we lasted a long time. We lasted a very long time. And I felt proud of how long I was able to deceive all of the other crewmates. It was a very fun time and I hope one day I will be able to tell you all that I played imposter and I won because I am going to get better. I am going to get better at being the imposter. And the final thing, you're probably wondering why is she wearing her pink and green and her pearls? Makeup done? Hair done? Why does she look so nice? Well, I went to the Eva Lois Evans Leadership Institute for the Great Lakes region in Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And I was there for a workshop that I was a part of. I was a panelist and it was just so much fun. I got to speak with the three previous women that have held the position that I know now hold as international second vice president. I was able to speak with them and one of the undergraduate members at large who I work with right now, we're all in some way from the Great Lakes region because I just live here right now. <laughs> we're all from the Great Lakes region and we were able to talk about leadership, Black Lives Matter, politics, voting, the coronavirus and getting a vaccine. So those are some of the topics we were able to cover for an hour and a half-ish that we were talking and it was so much fun. I really enjoyed being able to speak with them and also because at the end we were able to take questions and comments from the participants of the region. So it was very nice being able to see them, hear what they were thinking and they were so nice. They were telling us that we did an amazing job, that they know Alpha Kappa Alpha is in good hands with young women like us as leaders, that the future is female and I really just love being able to have these kinds of conversations with members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated because these are the people that put me in the position that I now hold. And a part of being a leader is also being a listener. It's, it's events like these that make this position truly amazing. And that is the perfect way to end this first week of school. To people who are watching out there, if you are a student, whether you are in middle school, high school, or college, I hope that you're getting ready to enjoy and have a safe spring semester because whether you're in person, online, or hybrid, you deserve it. And I hope that you are able to succeed academically, emotionally, socially, and just have a good year. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.